Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick intro of how to use Silo. And along the way, uh, we'll show you some of the things that make Silo unique and make people love it so much as a uh, pure polygon and subdivision modeler. Uh, so let's start out just by talking about the viewport navigation. Um, I'll just load a cube to start talking about this. So in Silo, everything is customizable. So um, if I go to the mouse settings, you can see here's um, where I can assign left mouse button, middle, right, and the scroll wheel. And on any of these, so left mouse button by default um, is just select visible new. So um, I won't go into detail about that, but you can basically, if I click on one of these, I can reassign any mouse button to anything. Um, not just so there's the special mouse only functions up at the top here, but then there's general functions. So every command in silo is assignable to any mouse button. And um, so you can basically um, emulate any other software's navigation. There's also presets down here um, that will emulate uh, specific software. But by default, it's just Maya style. So alt and left mouse button will rotate. Alt and middle mouse button or alt clicking in the scroll wheel will pan. And also on a laptop, this is set up um, so that alt shift left mouse button by default will pan the view. Uh, a lot of modeling or 3D software is not very laptop friendly, but Silo is quite laptop friendly. Um, and then alt and scroll or holding in right mouse button will do your zoom. And another thing to note in Silo is that the, um, the rotation and also the speed of the zoom and, and how it pans is all based on where this selection currently is. So, um, and that's also customizable. You can change that if you, if you want it to stay static. But uh, by default, wherever I select, the view will rotate around there and the panning will track to uh, basically match the depth of whatever the selection is. And it's just one of the things that makes Silo feel so smooth when you use it. Um, let's talk about um, now the uh, create menu. So there are just basic things that you would expect in here. Um, cube, cylinder, sphere, you know, all these, they're very standard. Um, and if you want to customize what you're creating, um, then each of these has these options uh, next to the menu item. And that will pop open this window. So this one's for the cube. So if I create a cube, by default, it's one meter high according to the units I have set. Um, if I click in one of these right after I create something, then I can adjust it and it will adjust it live. So I'm just clicking in here and, and then moving the mouse uh, up and down while I hold down the left mouse button. And that will adjust these numerical fields. So uh, that's how you customize those primitives. And then also another handy thing in Silo is this custom primitives folder. So this is just loading files from a folder that are on your hard drive. Um, and so if I reveal custom primitives folder, it will just pop that up and I'll see exactly where that's located. And then I can load whatever file I want into that. Um, and so these ones that uh, come included with Silo We've got a base man with feet or shoes, a base woman with feet or shoes. Um, I'm going to load them both into here so you can see them next to each other. And uh, anyway, you can put whatever you want in your own custom primitives folder and just have whatever you want sort of easily on hand to load from the menu. Okay, next let's talk about subdivision surfaces. Um, Silo is a subdivision surfaces modeler, so it's built to work very hand easily and handily with subdivisions. Um, so the default shortcuts to subdivide something, if you select it, are C to subdivide, and you uh, hit it recursively to subdivide it a layer smoother, and V to undivide. So, um, and if I hit Shift C, then that will refine the mesh to whatever its current uh, level of subdivision is. I'll undo that. Um, and if nothing is selected and I hit C, then it will subdivide everything in the scene. But that's the uh, way you get started working with these just very organic kind of clay-like subdivision surfaces. Um, 
Now let's talk about selection in general, because um, that's uh, one of the things that I think works really well in Silo. Um, so there's your standard um, object, uh, and the buttons are down here for it, face, um, edge, and vertex, and then a multi-select mode that will let you pop temporarily into um, edge mode or vertex mode or face mode, depending on what you first select. Um, and the keyboard shortcuts are for these are A for vertex, S for edge, it's got these selections loaded from before, D for face, F for object, and G for multi-select mode. And you'll notice um, if I, when I'm in object selection mode, I can select any object. But once I go into a component mode like um, face selection mode, then the other objects, I can't select them at all. So it's kind of like automatically taking your whatever part you're interested in or whatever uh, model you're interested in. <clears throat> if there are multiple, it's like taking it in, into its own layer and so you don't have to worry about accidentally selecting things back there. Um, and then the uh, manipulator tools are um, just standard what you'd expect also in terms of uh, you've got a translate um, which is by default on the W key you've got um, scale which is by default on the E key and you've got rotate which is by default on the R key and they've just sort of got different screen space or uh, axis controls to, um, to let you uh, use them basically how you'd expect in other software. Um, and um, now let's talk about selection highlighting. Um, actually, to do this, I'm going to turn on symmetry on this guy. Uh, calculate symmetry. So selection highlighting is uh, something that um, works really nice in Silo. So you can see when I'm selecting over faces, it just previews that if I click, it's going to select that face. And with mirroring on it shows me you know what will affect on how it will be affected on each side um, but silo has a, a really nice selection highlighting because it also works off model so you can see like as I'm hovering I'm not hovering over these faces directly I'm just near them and they're on the profile and so um, I can use, I'm using this command called tweak. I can just come along these edges and modify a profile while I'm looking at the profile. And, um, you know, when combined with things like mirroring and uh, multi-select mode also, um, then I can just sort of hover and tweak and it just works really, really smoothly. So I, you know, I don't have to sort of break out of my flow while I'm worrying about what to select. Um, and again, with as with everything in Silo, this is all customizable, so you can change which kind of selection, whether you're selecting through, so everything like a ray cast um, in front and back of the model, or just the visible front sides, um, and uh, yeah, play around with that. Um, but then the different selection modes, obviously area select and paint select um, are down here, sort of a lasso select. Uh, and that's your your basic selection tutorial. Okay, let's next talk about tools in Silo. Um, and a lot of these are in the modify menu. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'm going to talk about some of the concepts of how tools work in Silo. Um, and the big concepts are context sensitivity and uh, sticky keys. And I'll just show you how some of those play out. So, uh, for example, let's take the, um, it's um, basically, it's generally called the cut tool, just uh, assigned to the, by default to the keyboard shortcut X. And um, let me show you. So, first of all, if I hit X or enter the cut tool while um, nothing is selected on my model, then I'll enter this interactive tool. And this interactive tool uh, behaves differently depending on context. So for example, if I click off the model and drag, then it will just sort of slice through the model like I'm um, you know, performing a cut right where it goes across. Um, 
But if I, uh, let me unsubdivide here to show this on the base sub D level. If I start clicking on edges, then it works more like a, just an interactive polygon cutting tool that I can, you know, interactively use like this and just uh, make whatever cuts I want that way. So, but that same tool, that same key also works, um, let me undo that, if I have a selection. So it went into that tool before when I had no nothing selected. Um, but if I say have these vertex vertices selected and I hit X to enter that tool, it doesn't do the tool, it just performs a cut on that selection. Um, and if I have like a edge ring selected, whoops, like this, hit X and it will split the loop. It just sort of interprets what you want to do. Same thing if I have uh, faces selected like a face loop hit X it will just split those right down the middle um, so it's um, very uh, context sensitive and so you don't have to have a billion different keyboard shortcuts uh, memorized or you know calling them to do those you just do all that with the one cut command and you could even assign it to a mouse function if you if you use it a lot like shift click to, to do it to enter it or whatever um, and then also, uh, let me show you the concept of sticky keys. So there's another command uh, in here called um, split loop, shift X. I'll show this um, with that command. So um, if I select this sort of ring of edges um, and hit shift X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the keys as I hit it. So I'm hitting shift X, but now I'm holding it down. And as long as I have it held down, those keyboard shortcuts, if I just move the uh, mouse um, left and right, then it will perform a slide along those edges with that new edge that I've created. And as soon as I let go, it exits that tool. So uh, let me undo that. And then I'll do this again. Oops, let me just get the selection right. Now this time I'm going to hit Shift X without holding it down, and you'll see it just sort of immediately exits that tool. So if I don't want to do the slide, then I just don't hold it down. But there's a lot of things um, that if I hold them down, it will perform some additional function. And this split loop is, one is an interesting one also with context sensitivity, because if I have this just sort of uh, string of edges, like an edge loop instead of an edge ring selected, and I hit Shift X, it will automatically perform a bevel. And as I hold that down, it lets me adjust the bevel. And then as I let go, it exits that tool and I'm back selecting things. So sticky keys combined with, um, combined with context sensitivity let you do a lot of things without a lot of clicks. And that's one of the big things about Silo is just that you can, um, once you learn those concepts, uh, it's a very, very smooth tool to work with. Okay, now let's talk about um, how Silo handles UV unwrapping. Um, and to see this, let's uh, change the viewport layout um, to three view layout, right? And you can change what camera is in any of these viewports by um, right clicking and choosing viewport camera. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that Silo has a 3D UV view in addition to the 2D UV view. And um, basically whatever, and whatever you select in your um, 3D view, the regular geometry view, will show up in your UV views. Now how this, um, this 3D UV view can be handy if you're sort of manually unwrapping something. So let me just, um, uh, how you recreate UVs on something is you come to this recreate UVs menu and you can do it per face or um, a few other methods that I'll show. But one is using XYZ chords and you'll see here then in the UV 3D view, it um, actually is sort of a, a replica of, of the geometry 3D view. And the 2D view is basically looking from the top down um, from this 3D view. But this can be handy when you're decomposing a model if you're, if you're um, cutting it up manually. So say I select um, these uh, faces and then... Um, the uh, grow selection uh, keyboard shortcut is on equals plus button. So if I select half of this and then I perform the break command, um, then it breaks off this top half. But you can see I'm, I'm 
cutting up the UV version and uh, not the, the actual geometry. And it can be handy to have this in 3D sometimes to put things in different layers or just to sort of see more intuitively how you're, you're breaking up this model. But it'll always just use this 2D projection. But anyway, some people will like using this. Some people will just stick to the 2D view, um, but do whatever works best for you. But just another thing to call attention to is that um, a lot of the UV editing in Silo is essentially just using the regular modeling commands. So there are some UV specific tools that you'll find in the UV materials menu. Um, but a lot of these things basically just whoops, in the modify menu will work in the UV view also. So if I like select some edges and hit break, that basically makes a, uh, a seam in the UVs um, and lets me, you know, sort of divide something up that way. Um, all right, so uh, let me just show some of these other methods of UV unwrapping. So if we recreate on this sphere, if we use spherical projection, we get what we started with. Um, Oops. We've also got uh, your standard like uh, cubic projection and whatnot. Um, let me go back to XYZ coordinates. Let me show live LSCM unwrapping. So I'm going to do this how I was doing it before. Grow this and then uh, break the selection. I just hit the keyboard shortcut command B. So now I've got these two halves and we'll come down here into the 2D view so we can see this. Um, and double click, by the way, uh, is what I'm using to, to expand the selection on that. It's uh, actually the select loop command. So um, if I select two faces and hit double click, it will do the loop. If I have an edge and double click, it'll select the edge loop. But if it's just one face, then it figures, you know, there's no way you're trying to select a loop. So it will just do grow selection, which is a sort of handy doubling up of functionality. But anyway, um, to do live LSCM unwrapping, um, what I'll do is it, it works with islands of UVs. And so you first need to pin a couple of UVs, or at least one. Um, and so uh, that's you can do it from the right click menu. There will be a toggle for it, um, but it's also up in the UVs materials menu. But when something's pinned, it becomes, you can see the vertex becomes blue. And so if I, um, pin a couple of these, so from right click, um, and then I turn on live UV unwrapping. Once I start moving this, it will perform the LSCM calculations that try to mathematically preserve the correlation between the, the UV geometry, um, the flattened version, and the 3D geometry. It'll do that live. And uh, that can be handy. And then if I like, you know, come in and maybe break this uh, to make a um, uh, cut there, um, you can see quickly how it's easy to just sort of start slicing something up and moving it around. Um, and if I don't have anything pinned, but I just select the whole thing and then recreate UVs with LCM unwrapping, it will sort of try to guess the best vertices to pin um, and and unwrap it um, and uh, anyway often it's that'll work and sometimes you just want to pin your own UV vertices but that's the basic overview of how UVs work in silo and there's a lot of details in there but I just wanted to give that quick overview finally I just want to reiterate the customizability of silo um, and I've showed some of that throughout this but uh, just to drive that home, is pretty much everything is customizable. So um, like I, sh I showed how to customize the mouse, but um, with, for example, keyboard shortcuts, even just hovering over anything, if I want to you know, change the cut command from X to a different key, if I just hover over that and I hit, say, like the tilde key, it will uh, ask me if I want to assign that to um, that new cut tool uh, shortcut. But I don't. But anyway, that's an easy way to customize the keyboard um, shortcuts. Uh, color settings can be completely customized. So there's some presets here, like uh, uh, Silo Black, ones that we've designed. Uh, you can sort of 
easily get it to look like Maya or whatever. Um, and you can just come in and customize all the colors yourself. And this is for interface colors in the windowing, but also in the modeling. So you can get it to look basically whatever you want it to look like. Uh, and then also just the, the buttons. So this interface, these are all just image buttons that it's loading. Um, and you can, you can basically set up these buttons however you want them to be using your own image files if you want. So you can literally make Silo look like anything and behave like anything. Um, and uh, anyway, a lot of people have made their own custom interfaces for this. And the, the only two that we have by default are this default one, but also this minimal one, which you can see just gets rid of those buttons up there. So if you never use those buttons up there, uh, then you can just have these ones down here or just have no buttons at all. Um, but um, anyway, it's it's all very customizable. Um, and there are display settings for things like edge width and, and alpha of your selections. Um, and like I say, the mouse settings, which we had already talked about before. But anyway, you can make Silo behave basically however you want it to and to fit in pretty smoothly with any other workflow. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and we hope that you love Silo. And uh, any comments or suggestions, just send them to silo at neversender.com and we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks.